The time has come for the official handover of the keys. After weeks of anticipation, Jaden gets to call this house her new home. With the build all finished, Dustin is ready to give Jadine the keys. It's an emotional time for Jadine, and not surprisingly, Dustin as well. They've been through a lot together over the past few months. Here we go, handover day. So um, this is probably one of the best days, really, for the whole build. Um, no, I'm not getting emotional, it's just one of those things. Um, but I'm really proud, obviously, to, um, to be handing over these keys to, to young Jadine. Um, you guys have had the, the, um, the joy of following this program and, and hopefully you've picked up a few tips along the way. It's been a bit of a giggle from our point of view. Certainly quite tough sitting in front of the camera talking to you, but um, honestly, this, this day is just fabulous. It's, um, it's what makes it all worthwhile. There's a heck of a lot of work that goes into building these homes. And when we've got great clients like young Jadine here um, to work with, it makes it even better. So. With great pleasure, I uh, hand over the keys, my dear, to your new Thank home. Thank you so much. And I really hope you Thank enjoy you. it. Honestly, mate, you've been absolutely fabulous to Not work for. And um, Look at our keys. we really hope that you enjoy it and, and that Midi Armour and, and yourself, you know, you'll grow into this new home and friends and family can come round and, and just enjoy the space. All right? Thank so you so much. Thanks for everything you've done and thanks for letting us be a part of it with you. Thank you so much. It's been an amazing journey, um, right from the start to the finish. Um, I'm so excited. I'm actually quite emotional as well because it's... It's been, it's been an amazing experience and also having a project manager as on to it as you um, took so much of my stress away and um, made it a really happy journey and not, um, not stressful on me. So thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. There's a wee, uh, if you turn around, there's a wee thing going to pop out from around behind that door there. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Just a wee oh, token of thanks look, from me, mate, just uh, for, um, for being so good. Dusty gave those to us. <laughs> They're huge. So welcome to your new home. Thank you. With the big move happening tomorrow, I caught up with Jadine to see how she's feeling about it all. I'm here with Jadine and she has got the keys to the door. It's so exciting. And I'm standing here. Look, the house is looking fantastic. How are you feeling? Very excited, very emotional. Yeah. Um, oh, I know. It's all just coming together mm. and um, it's happening. <laughs> it is, it is. And, you know, from the journey through with you and, and like from, from where it was just like getting the roof on and all that and how we're standing here in this, your fabulous bedroom with the curtains looking great and I'm loving the black wall. Wouldn't have chosen it myself, but it works, hun, it works. With your black and white tiles in there, it's great. I know. So, yeah, so your big, big move tomorrow? Yes. Um, had amazing support from absolutely everyone. Um, you know, Dusty, project manager, mm -hmm. he's been so helpful, fantastic. But my family especially, they're oh, coming cool. down from Blenheim. Um, they're bringing their trailers, everything. The whole whole turning up tomorrow. Oh, um, and some cousins here moving in tomorrow. Um, it's going to be a fantastic day. It and be. it's meant to be good weather too, so. Well, we're, we're hoping for good weather. We've had a bit of a cold, funny day today, but I'm yep. sure it'll be fine. The weather's going to be all good. So, yay. Be I know. Really great. I know. Very yeah. excited. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to seeing the seeing what the house looks like with all your furniture in. Yes. And when we have the uh, last episode party, so there'll be a few Oh, yeah, definitely. Then, there'll, so. be, there'll be a party for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Since Dustin first started working with Jadine, he's been waiting for her to bake him some muffins. Now that the house build is over, will he finally get what he's been waiting for? So today's handover day and um, it's been a pretty exciting day. We're in my beautiful kitchen again um, and I haven't, still haven't had the pleasure of uh, cooking in this puppy yet. So I do have a wee something for Dustin. We've had a wee bit of a thing going on through the uh, show and I really want you to have this. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You have to open it. Do I have to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on special from Countdown. That's <laughs> not really what I was after, but I dare say that you'll... I'll show you how to work the oven you can cook me some real ones. That's wonderful, mate. Thank you very much. You really think I would have let that go just like that? No, it was... No. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the real one. It's oh, made with love. Oh my god, this whole thing's been about a trick, isn't it? Yeah, that's Thank actually you. homemade real. That's gorgeous. Thank you. Thank Good you. On. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Note to all future customers, this is a requirement for all our builds, okay? Thank you very much. <laughs> it's all right.
Hi, today my advice is on contractors. Contractors are really, really important in our business and really important for you as a homeowner too. Um, we're quite lucky at Fowler Homes, we've got great continuity, so the contractors that we have involved in our builds have been with us for a, a long, long time. Now, in terms of a long, long time, I mean 10 to 15 years, a couple of the guys have been working with us, which is great. Um, if we get a good team of contractors together, um, it makes my job a heck of a lot easier because everybody can communicate um, with each other, they all know each other, um, if there's a problem with one contractor prior to the other one, the guys will generally run, and run across each other on site, so it's very easy to sort out. Um, having quality contractors obviously impacts on Fowler Homes and, and you as a client to ensure that the quality of your build is what it's supposed to be. Um, so contractors are really, really important, and I think that's where most people are, are lucky. If you're dealing with a, a company such as ours, we've already vetted the contractors, so we know we've got good guys. Um, hand on heart, we can confirm that they're going to do a good job for you and that you're going to be happy with uh, the result. So if you're looking for a build and um, you're going to be dealing with a company that's well established, make sure their contractors are also well established. Most of the contractors are licensed now too, so there's um, come back on those guys if something goes wrong or um, you know, there's a, I don't know, there's a warranty period or something that's required. So um, contract is really important. They've got to be friendly and um, approachable to our, to our clients as well because you know, you're going to come across them on site, you know, the electricians, the plumbers, the kitchen installers, everybody. So um, make sure you've got a good bunch of contractors on board and it'll make your build a lot easier. Coming up on your new home, things get heated at Jane's house as the build is at a standstill. It's not in there yet, and with all the delays going on, Jane can only hope her fireplace will be installed by next winter. So this is where the old fireplace was, and so the new fireplace is going in exactly the same place. The difference is um, I had a wood burner here, and this is now going to be a, a gas fireplace, which is great. We've got a, one from Dunedin, and it's really nice to be able to buy New Zealand prod, product rather than sourcing it from China, so I'm quite pleased about that. And there's going to be a heat pump down there, so it's, it's a big room to heat, and this is more for ambience. And, and because the old house has got such sentimental value to me, I'm trying to replicate a few things in the new house. So this is going to have a stone surround, um, very, very similar to the old one, and with the mantelpiece across the top, again, very very similar uh, again it was a really hard decision choosing what sort of stone to have around it uh, Ivan gave me a place to go and have a look at and I got, I got it narrowed down to a couple and didn't know where to go this way or that way so once again Amy was just brilliant I took all the samples in and said if it was you what would you do and we've and as it happened she chose almost identical to what I had originally and rather it was lovely round looking stone because it's everything's very linear in here so to have round just softens things and so hopefully it will look equally as good as what we had before. While Jane stands by what soon will be her fireplace, Dustin pops into Placemakers Rickerton to see exactly what it will look like. Today we're at Placemakers Rickerton and we're going to talk to um, John about the gas fires. Now this is a gas fire for Jane's house. Now unfortunately Ivan's too busy today because he's got plenty of other things he needs to sort out at her house. So I've come down to Placemakers Rickerton, we'll have a talk to John, see what sort of gas fire she's going to put in. Um, obviously gas fires, there's many different options you can choose from. Um, Jane's gone with a particular model that she likes which I I think had some remblance to the um, previous one. So, John Smith, g'day John, how you going? How you going mate, how you going? Good, good to see you. Yeah, Thanks what can you go. tell us about the uh, gas fires mate? What's, um, tell us a wee bit about the Sasea brand. Okay, well the Sasea is a New Zealand company that's based in Dunedin, and it's a fire that's been on the market for about 12 years. Yep. Uh, this is the latest edition of the model. Um, comes with a multiple options of faces and designs, so if you're a customer, they can custom make it for their own situation. Yep. Uh, they may want, um, stone effect or they may want a log effect and it's just a question of what they really want so yeah okay so now the, the DL850 which is the one that Jane's using yes. it's got a couple of really cool features yes, um, is, there's yeah. a remote control um, uh, with the remote can I just show you the remote uh, the remote is a remote that you put up on the wall at home yeah and it's a thermostat remote so what actually happens is the room will then be temperatured to whatever setting you've got it for. Yeah. And if she's uh, technically minded like a lot of young people are these days, if she's got a cell phone, she can have an app which basically allows her to operate the phone away from uh, the, the fire away from the house. So you can sit at the couch, mate, and just press a button and change it. Correct. Or but more importantly, if you're on the way home late one night, think I'd like the fire going, yeah. push the button, it's all going before you get there. Right, cool. 
So great option, and it's just a download, free download, so it comes with the fire. Okay. Now the DL850, 850, 850 wide. Uh, no, around about 850 wide is the firebox, and yep. the actual face is just over a metre wide. Okay. So right. a great, it's a great setup for anyone that wants to put a TV above, say 42, 50 inch TV. Yep. It fits perfectly in with that style. Yeah. Okay. Additional varying lengths in this particular uh, Yes, model. there's a couple of options that you can take it out to about that size. So you can take it out to about 1,200 wide okay. with some options of faces. All right. Now, in terms of ambience and output and stuff, I mean, obviously people are using gas fires for heating. Yes. So there's a certain kilowatt output that most people refer to. So what sort of uh, kilowatts have got this one? Very grunty, uh, up to around about 9.2 kilowatts. Uh, has a great setting for the summer option, so if you want to run it just during the summer months, just for a bit of warmth and ambience, yep. uh, around about three kilowatts, so it okay. covers the whole range. All right. Now, uh, built-in fan, is that right, just to encourage that heat Built to Built-in fan plus a booster on it, yep. so you've got the uh, daylight today, for example, you can have the fire going, and you can uh, boost it for about half an hour. Okay, well, that's awesome. All right, well that's looking pretty good. So that's what Jane's gonna put in her home. Um, a really nice gas fire, um, good brand, and placemakers reckon obviously are looking after the supply and installation. And um, so that'll be good. Thanks mate, thanks for coming along and having a talk to us. Hi, I'm Ivan, and this is my tip of the day, fittings. So fittings are, to me, the things inside the house that you get to select based on um, some products that we have to choose from and all products that you want to choose for your house. Um, I've said this to many, many clients over the years, is basically when you're doing, building a house, you should be having a lot of fun. Fittings are things that, to me, are a lot of fun. Imagine choosing your door handles, choosing well, the front door handle, for example, choosing the interior door handles, they're pretty simple, but some people get really excited about the front door handle. It's gonna be a crazy looking thing or just a simple design and then we start getting into the house and choosing fittings like your appliances, for example, in your kitchen, your washing machine, your dryer, your TVs, for a lot of people that's really important, audio visual, um, home theatres, um, God, there's, there's a huge gambit of different things that you've got to choose from. And when you're selecting them, um, the people that we use can give you that advice. Unfortunately, largely, as if you're probably getting the gist of what I put down here, is people have to make these cho choices based on budget. None of us are any different. And when we built, I couldn't decide on what to put in certain areas, so I left it out and then chose later on. But choosing those fittings should be a lot of fun. Um, it's a lot more fun if you get a lot more money, but um, there's still a lot to choose from within sort of what I consider standard allowances. So my tip of the day is have fun when choosing your fittings. That's my tip of the day. Jane's had Ivan's help with a lot of the choices she's made along the way, but sometimes you've just got to make those tough decisions yourself. Or ask Amy from next door. In a perfect world, I'd be actually showing you all this actually on the floor, but um, it ain't a perfect world, and so you're going to have to use your imagination. And I'll just walk you through what I've chosen. I mean, without Amy, I would have been really stuck. She's, and she, I mean, some things are really easy, like um, my tiles for bathrooms and laundry, I had no doubt about that. Right from day one, that was really clear. And likewise, my, my timber flooring for upstairs. But I angsted over the carpet. That was the, probably the hardest. And I actually started with wool, then went to acrylic because I didn't want to worry about fading. But when you get this, all the sun, as you can imagine, in here or downstairs, it gets that shine on it. So then I was back to wool again. So that was a huge dilemma for me. And then trying to tie the tiling outside on the decks to match both the timber and the, the carpet, was, that was problematic as well. So Amy had the patience of a saint, but you know, I'm really comfortable with what I've got. And it's just a shame I can't actually show you in situ. But never mind, when I get back, um, you never know, it might be down. I doubt it, but yeah, you've got to have dreams. Jane will be expecting to have walls very soon, so Ivan has headed out to Winstone Wallboards to speak with Clara about jib plasterboard. We are at uh, Winstone Wallboards here in Apawa, Christchurch to talk to Clara Sumner and have a look around the plasterboard plant here. Uh, Fowler Homes have been using Winstone Wallboards forever and uh, I've known Clara for a few, few of those years. But um, in the shed that we're in, this is a distribution shed, so all the manufactured boards put here and then orders come in and it's, and it's pallet, put on pallets and sent to site. But um, more interesting than that, Claire is going to tell us a bit about Winstones and her involvement with it, because it's been a couple of years now. 
Yeah, thanks Ivan. We've, uh, I've worked with Winstones, as you know, since 1992, so been around a number of years. On the site here, this is our distribution centre, so this is where we make up all your orders. Uh, the area here is relatively new. We built this uh, probably about six years ago, and this is just to accommodate the growing market. Um, you know, it gives us quite an extensive area to store the product in. Um, the guys here behind me are making up house lots that we will you know, send to your sites. It's clear, it's something that blew me away probably, I think it was about four years ago, as I was, Glenn, our jib fixer, sent me through an order that he'd sent to Winstones, and it was 14 tonne of jib on the house. It was a large house, it was a 390 square metre house. And I think people probably don't realise how heavy the product is, so not only is it 14 tonne on your house foundations and floor, but people have to physically lift it. Uh, not so much in here, this is pretty much all done by machinery. Correct, but it does need to be lifted onto site. So we offer the delivery to site service yeah. now. So that takes away from your builders or your fixers having to actually unload the board straight onto site. We, uh, we provide a driver and a labourer to do that. And you know, you're right, you know, they work very, very hard. Um, an average house lot you know, could be anything from you know, six tonne to, to eight tonne very easily. Uh, our guys, um, you know, they're lifting about five or six tonne each a day. Coming up next on your new home, Clara takes us through the very interesting process of making jib plasterboard, and Jaden makes the big move. We've seen just a small part of Winston wall boards. It's time to check out the process involved in making jib plasterboard. So this is our distribution uh, centre, so the trucks uh, enter in through the back of the premises here and uh, at any one time we can get four B trains in here. Uh, we service the South Island out of the distribution centre here and uh, you know, it gets really busy at certain times of the day, we've got a bit of a quiet spot at the moment, I guess everyone's eating lunch. But we, uh, we start here at 6 in the morning and we get a lot of the, the local trucks in for the local deliveries on site and as the day progresses that sort of slows down a bit and then we'll get the big B trains in uh, from about 2 o'clock and that's a big truck and trailer, they take about 25 uh, tonne of board. We're putting out um, a lot of board every day at the present time, our market here is obviously fairly busy uh, and you know, we're manufacturing 24-7 at the present time and our dispatch operation is working uh, at least uh, you know, 12 to 16 hours a day sometimes. So behind us here you'll see we've got all our plasterboard uh, paper liner. So this is made for us by a company called Vizzy and we receive shipments in from Melbourne on a really regular basis by the container load. Uh, they make the paper to our recipe so we have some fairly specific requirements around quality. You know, we want to ensure we've got a nice flat good quality paper. Uh, a roll of paper like we have up here is about 6,000 litres of paper. It uh, weighs about one and a half tonne, so we've got some special you know, forklift equipment to deal with that and have to take obviously care getting that onto the line. Okay, so behind us here we've got our plasterboard uh, manufacturing plant. Uh, currently we're making uh, 10 mil standard and uh, you'll see behind us, you can see the paper travelling along the line and the main slurry coming in and forming the paper. We've got a, a long piece of plasterboard there that's been formed, it's about 100 metres long. By the time it gets the other end here, we cut it and we put it in the dryers and uh, we mechanically dry it. We make all our board on this line here. So anything from 10 mil standard to 13 mil brace line to fire line uh, is all made on the same plant. When we do need to swap uh, manufacturing, we will actually close down the plant, clean everything up and then set up for the new product mix. The purpose of the end tapes here is to help us identify what the products are. You'll see clearly that the end tapes have all got the different product names on it. So we've got Ultraline, Fireline, Aqualine, Standard. The whole idea of the end tapes is uh, not only identification of the product, but when we manufacture the product, we put two sheets face to face. We uh, cut the end so we've got a nice, even and, and tidy cut to the end of the sheet. And then we put the end tapes on and that holds the sheets together and protects them. So the board is just uh, coming off the end of the line now. It's gone hard enough that the product can be cut. And it's just gone through the knives and we've cut the, the sheet leaves that we uh, desire at this present time. Uh, and then the board is put on the table here behind me and turned over. We make the board face down and then at this stage we turn it over so the good side of the board is face up. And that's just to protect it as the board travels through the, the dryer and over the rollers. 
what we've got here is every house that we build, we buy a rondo. This is a ceiling batten. I'm not allowed to touch it, health and safety, some nonsense like that, but anyway. What happens here is this, this gets fastened into the truss. The reason we use this is it pretty much stops peaking and plockling, which is a, a, a problem that can occur if you fix the timber bit. Timber moves too much, it feels much more stable, straight. It's perfect for a uh, jib plasterboard to be um, glued and screwed to. Um, since we got uh, spoken to from Winstones, their suggestion was we use this product. I thought it was another sales pitch, but um, truthfully, we've had virtually no picking and popping ever since we've used this Jib Rondo um, product. Um, so it comes in multiple lengths. We cut the length on site, and in Dustin's own words, this stuff's really good. So gypsum's our core raw material that goes in the the, uh, the core of the board, it's called calcium sulphate. Uh, we get that in from the south of Australia, comes in by the ship to Littleton, and then it's brought down by truck and trailer from Littleton to the site here. We get in about 25,000 tonne at a time, and we'll get those in regularly throughout the year, and of course that will be dependent on volume in the market at any one time. Finally, the time has come. It's moving day. Jadine and her family have been working hard to get the house set up. So today's um, going really well. My room and Mitty's room's coming together really well. We've just put the beds together. It's exciting, amazing experience. All my family's here. They've come uh, down from Blenheim a lot, and my cousins are here as well. And all the kids are running around, and we're starting to create some really awesome memories here um, already, and it's day one. I'm excited. Tears of joy they have been today. It's been great. We all know what it's like unpacking belongings we haven't seen for a long time. Jadine finds a few forgotten treasures amongst the boxes. This has been one of the most amazing days actually of my life besides having my daughter and um, gee, yeah, and now it's getting quite emotional to be honest. Um, we packed all of this stuff when I was pregnant with Mariama because I was told that um, to get ready to move out of the house, you know. Um, it was going to be repaired and so on and so on. So my mum came down, my amazing mum, and um, started packing, so, you know, before my wee girl came along. And I'm pulling out all these photos of family, um, Kruger and my, my other dog, Tyler. I haven't seen this stuff in two and a half years. And dishes and wine glasses I forgot I had. It's actually like Christmas and, it's, and it is emotional as well. Jadine didn't expect moving house to be as emotional as it has been. The memories come flooding back along with the tears. Oh my God, this was my Nana's. <laughs> and it used to sit in her toilet <laughs> when I was a little girl and I remember it's got this little stain on the side of it and it's toilet. <laughs> and used to go in there as kids and <laughs> it's actually really funny but it's, you know, when I was a little girl I remember it and I forgot I had it. <laughs> I'd read it but I probably burst into tears. <laughs> Next time, it's the final episode of Your New Home. Dustin surprises Jadine with one last act of kindness. And Jane and Jadine meet for the first time to discuss their very different building experiences.